in the uh, days of old. The day, the days of old, back when standard was the standard. Well, yeah. for a good time. Yeah. So. <laughs> Once again, we got another like essentially game five, game three scenario between these two runners, and they are off C and B single arrow in the. I, I'm so distracted right now by this whole uh, <laughs> black and white scenario we got going on over here. I mean, it's going to be really easy to tell the difference between the two runners, but what is happening? <laughs> Why is this a thing? How will we tell apart the males, swords, and potions? Is this is this the new is this the new the new joke of uh, of the tournament? Is this the do we got a, a new meme in the making? Is that what's happening? Maybe. So, uh, any Christos and Ben subs in in chat? I want to see I want to see a lot of uh, Christos cups and some Ajneb bananas. I was gonna say some Ajneb butts but you know banana is probably a better choice yeah i want to see what the audience thinks is going to be the outcome here right, and we got we got color on ben's side so that's good and both players taking the same route going to the secret passage but finding nothing very much of value and that that uh, seems to be continuing and it looks like ben took an accident save or he started at the wrong location so he's going to be a few seconds behind starting from sanctuary yeah, I don't think it's an insurmountable. Uh, Dude, everything, it, it, it's going to come down to second. Any, it could come down to seconds. Every second matters. And that is uh, true. We are going to get a route divergence. Um, Ruba, what, 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 what's so special about this route that Ben is taking right now? This route will allow him to easily farm bombs south of the Haunted Grove, whereas Christos is more or less hoping that these these bush crabs and or tree poles have the rupees or bombs he needs or the rupees that he needs to buy bombs yeah seriously we got red rupees from the bush crab which you know ben might not ever see that <laughs> or at least anytime soon um i missed what was in the lumberjack cave that was a quick peek i didn't see it either it also can be kind of frustrating for ben's route because sometimes those bombs don't always spawn so you gotta sometimes you know, check a few extra times just in case. Uh, but he did get his two bombs, so he's good to go. And we saving one of those bombs since the maze race only had red rupees. Yeah, it's one. I'm gonna wonder just how much money we're gonna see in Kakariko if those bush crabs are actually crucial. Oh my gosh! So far, pretty much every single <laughs> overworld item has been a red rupee. We got Maze Race Library. We got both the items in Lost Woods. Red Rupees. Big 20s. They're everywhere. We get uh, the silvers it. here in the back of the tavern. Now, for those that watched their last race, do you think we'll be seeing those silvers at all this match? Good question. It seems as if we had some sort of, I don't know, gentleman's agreement about not using silvers in their last race. So, uh... Maybe, eh, we'll see. If you ask them, I think they just forgot. But uh, I don't know oh, if I'm they should sure. be trusted. Chris is now going to be grabbing their silver arrows, and that 300 rupees in the chicken hut is going to allow Ben to pick up some more bombs, and we'll probably see some bombs purchased on Chris's side as well. Yeah, especially with zero count here coming from uh, the top part of Kakariko. Ben will also now be getting swindled out of his 100 rupees just for 10 arrows, but time to find out what kind of value we're going to find in the bottom of the well and blind basement eventually. We haven't really found anything yet, so something's got to give, right? Yeah, I mean, the seat could be broken. <laughs> like, all of the progression is just locked in Ganon's Tower. Speaking of, well, we got, so far we found, you know, two three bomb items in a bomb of the well so that that purchase already so, suddenly doesn't seem as valuable it's a frustrating scenario to be in it's like do i take the gamble and go into one of these places without bombs and hope i find bombs or just go ahead and buy bombs yeah it's a real pain and honestly this is why ben's route kind of helps christos had to walk all the way down to get bombs because he didn't want to gamble on the well having bombs or the blinds hut We'll see if there's any bombs here in Blindside as well. Yeah, oh, there's nothing the in here, so if Christos 
If Christos came in here, he'd have to come back. <laughs> Another big 20. What well, fortunately, think? with that other 300 rupees, we do have Zora money now. Um, yeah, we'll see. Depending on what Ben routes the rest of Lost Woods, and if he checks that Lumberjack cave, we'll just kind of figure out which routing actually saved him time or not. Yeah, this is kind of the opposite of a poverty seed right now. Although the cape has got to me making these runners feel a bit uh, anxious. A little nervous. Yeah, a little scared. Though at this, at this point, Aga Tower, it's not that bad anymore, right? And besides, they're still looking for a few things. They need either two swords or a sword and a lamp. And usually, unless it's like Moon Pearl on the pyramid, like Aga Tower is still just kind of up in the air. Yeah, I like to keep like a running tally of the items needed for Dark World access versus the items needed for Aghanim access. <laughs> and that's like my anxiety mm -hmm. counter. <laughs> I mean, generally, you need, well, what, you need three, potentially three items to get into the Dark World, you know, Glove Hammer, Moon Pearl, or for Aga Tower, you need, cape, you know, Lamp, Cape, and Sword, or just two swords, so they're almost right. kind of, like, on even ground. Exactly. Yeah, Ben, skipping out and checking Lumberjack Cave is going to allow him to kind of catch up a little bit. He's only about one chest behind. One screen transition behind, or two. But yeah, it's still... You, you mentioned Poverty Seed. At least it's a, been a bit of a Poverty Seed when it comes to you know progressive items, or just items in general. Yeah, nothing good in the dam, and nothing good in the uh, little pond outside. And we do get to be just treated by the uh, the bomb strats in Mini Mulder and Cave. You know... You don't really see this as often, and or at least I don't see this as often as I did when I first started playing V27. But Christos pulling it off with uh, relative ease. It is <laughs> two heart pieces. Wow. Bomb upgrade. Come on, more rupees. The, okay, come on. There we All go. Right. There's something. Oh, it's better. Okay, so. The I'm going to get... Oh, man. Ben actually only using three bombs, so having the better mini Moldorm cave and getting the power gloves first, so, you know, just saving minor... Sa <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you should just, like, leave the cave after getting the glove. I think that's uh, that's good enough, right? That, that, that'd probably be met with a lot of speculation, but <laughs> sure. <laughs> he cracks the seed wide open, you know? <laughs> uh, those three chests in the back of escape. Man. <laughs> Oof. Yeah, we got that now. We have a uh, uh, sequence break up to Death Mountain as an option. Which has fallen mm. out of vogue in this version. Zora! We got Zora! He's uh, he's in the pool now. Yeah, but without the Moon Pearl or Flippers, you know, you don't want to do that until you can check the Waterfall Cave. Yeah, that's generally the ideal route, but... You know, maybe we'll see like a mushroom next. So then mushroom will take you to the witch's hut, which will then just take you straight to Zora. And it looks like we're going to get a little bit more divergence. Uh, I'm, ass I'm assuming Ben is going to fake flipper at least to check the Lake Hylia Island and uh, up to Hobo. Um, we'll see if he continues further. While Christmas will be checking the back of escape. He's got three items coming up. Let's see what he finds. I like the play Christos is doing. Just because, you know, a lot of people think there's progression. There's like a distinct progression. If you get an item, you should follow it. It mm -hmm. plays out like that sometimes, but... Um, the breadcrumb theory? Yeah, I mean, it, it. I think it plays out more often than not in this yeah. version. People always say it doesn't exist, but doing. it's... I, I guess it really depends, but yeah. Well, we'll find out. If the shovel actually leads to progression, then... We we break we we break rooms. We definitely break rooms. And notably, Christos opting not to do the sequence break into the dark sewers, even though he doesn't have, really have a sword, so it's really hard to actually get through there. Oh, oh <laughs> the, my goodness! The journey continues. We're not done here. Now now we're gonna see a sick kid mushroom or something. We can only hope. And uh, on Ben's side, only finding 10 arrows from the hobo and red rupees on Lake Hylia Island. So still no real 
progression yet. Um, yeah, I, I highly doubt. Oh, actually, you know, you're right. Christos, ne Christos never checked Maze Race or Library, so this actually works out pretty well for his routing. Being able to come back here, check Shovel, check these two, and then check Sick Kid. That's kind of a new one. You don't really see people skip out on those two uh, spots. Uh, it's probably because Christos ended his Kakariko collection in the north side of mm -hmm. the town. Because I see... he had to buy bombs. Yeah, exactly. A lot of runners will do that. Like, they don't want to spend the time walking all the way back down there. They'll just figure they'll check it later on. Just a heart piece. So. So how about those breadcrumbs? <laughs> assuming Ben does the same thing, you know, we're going to be back to square one, basically. So at this point, what do we got? We got Hyrule Castle, we've got Sahasrala, we've got Eastern, and we got Agonis Cave and Zora. Those are all the remaining locations that are still within logic. I yeah. Christos is making his way towards at least Sahasrala. We'll probably dip into Eastern Palace. I mean, the front of escape is also an option, but without a viable weapon. It's kind of yeah. a pain. Yeah, yeah, it, it really is. I mean, at least if you don't have a weapon, if you had like a stun item, like a boomerang or a hookshot, then you can at least stun them and bomb them. Mm -hmm. Or a real weapon, that works too. Yeah, speaking of viable weapons, we find the hammer here in the back of Sahashrila's hut. Christo is going to be taking that hammer and bailing right on out of there. Where is he going to go next? Looks like it's probably going to be Hyrule, now that he has that, that weapon. Going to escape, yeah. All right, so we are all of a sudden one item away from that beautiful Dark World access. We just got to find that Moon Pearl, and then suddenly this whole seed has kind of opened up a little bit more. Yep, the anxiety ratio is now one to two. <laughs> Wait, maybe this is a swordless seed. Hammer before a sword? Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> I don't know if I agree with the play of skipping out on Eastern. I mean, we don't have the lamp, so by the logic, you know... Can only really be in those big first key chests. Yeah. Yeah. But I still like to get it out of the way, and it's something you don't want to leave for a long time, because if, if like, the bow is a trolley item and something vital, like the mirror or the hookshot is in there, it can completely ruin your run. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of the rule... Oh, we see Dark Palace is the... Pendant of Courage, the green pendant in this seed. Gross. Um, yeah, we. that's kind of one of those things, what kind, of, kind of one of the rules of randomizer is that if you leave one of the sphere zero, one of the locations in the light world that you have access to from the beginning um, for too long, and then like you keep putting it off, it, it kind of hurts your chances. Or like, I don't know, I, I think it's always better to just kind of go for it. And at least it's out of your mind. And we are going to see Ben going for it. So if he ends up finding like a sword or our, uh, the moon pearl or something, then it's going to give him a pretty big, uh, pretty big advantage. Yeah, this is kind of recalling the last race where Christos never actually went into the front of escape and notably skipped out on a lot of overworld and ended up just dipping <laughs> back into Hera basement. <laughs> Like, oh, really? the reason, the reasoning behind that is, is you skip out on these locations and as a racer, you have to assume, especially against an opponent like, oh, okay, there's a nice moon pearl there, already getting a lot of value and dark world access. There it is. But, okay, so <laughs> if you skip these locations and you assume other people are going to check them, you've pretty much already lost if you have to go back to check them. So you just have to assume that your progression is forward or somewhere that like was recently unlocked. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's kind of hard at the beginning of the game when you have all these locations that are wide open. So it, you want to play towards that new item you just got. So, and, but the thing is like hammer doesn't actually fall into the logic yet other than getting into the dark world. Um, Cause like, you're like, oh, I got a hammer, now I can do escape. Well, escape doesn't really require a weapon to get through by the logic. Right. Like bombs, it, all, it doesn't even, like, bombs is just fine. Um, 
So the question is, will Ben also make the play into escape? That's one of those locations that I feel is if you skip it at the beginning, it's okay to not to like put it. It's okay to put it off for a long time um, because it's so quick to get back to. While Eastern Palace is kind of really out of the way and awful one to track back to. Yeah, it's nice to do if you can get like the mirror when you go to Pyramid later on, because then you can just like go in or mirror back to the light world, go inside, then you know go downstairs and then mirror back and then leave, and then you're right back in the dark world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And it looks like I wonder if Chrysus will also make the play through the dark rooms just to clear everything you can before getting Armos. We're still looking for one more item in here. And, uh, you know, if it ends up being over here, that's a huge advantage. If it ends up being on Armos, then it's like, oh, great. Well, at least now I know <laughs> it's going to be on Armos. Yeah, this is one of the important crystals, so they will probably be back sooner rather than later, assuming they get the bow sometime in the next, I don't know, hour. Well, the thing is, if they get that bow, then, you know, harsh, you know, pod all of a sudden becomes on the table once you get into the dark world. Which yeah. nobody wants to go to pendant, pendant pod. Oh, wow. Ice run. Okay. All right. We don't know if that's required yet. We have three dark world pendant dungeons. So that's a good thing to find. It looks like Christmas is also going to be picking up that ice rod. Mm -hmm. Ben's going to be checking out the hype cave area. We'll probably get a map check as well. And in this version, Palace of Darkness without the bow is a bit more profitable in general. All right, Ruble, what do you, you think we're going to get some hype going on? Oh, hold on one sec. We got we got Pendant Mire and Pendant Thieves Town. So that ice rod is required. Yep. And Swamp Palace is the second important crystal. Woof. Woof. <laughs> Woof. <laughs> All right, Hype Cave, what do you got for us? Are you going to be hyped today? Not so much, just yet. I'm not feeling it yet. Uh, uh, uh. Uh. <laughs> hey, he got he got a heart refill. He, he got a new heart container. That, that's something to get excited about. Yay! So that means that you know, Paradox Cave has to be the the hype cave in this one since we got what glove and mini molder and nothing in there. You know, it, it's got to it's got to have something, right? Uh, maybe. Assuming we get uh, Hookshot or Mirror sometime soon. All right, so Christos will be following right behind Ben. And uh, looks like, yep, Ben's going to be making his route over here, checking digging game, and then save and quit out. Oh, first sword. Yep, that's good. Uh, at a minimum, that lets us use medallions, lets us get to... Mafula, if we really want to go there, and we have the fire rod, lets us, I don't know, hit things hit with the sword. It's a good quality. It's a good thing to have. It's expert, expert level commentary. A sword lets you hit things with a sword. It's pretty, pretty straightforward. <laughs> and a blue tunic from the digging game. So sword and tunic. Now I just got to find that shield and then we'll be, we'll be in business. So the question is, where to next? It looks like Ben will either be going up to Death Mountain to sequence break up there, or he's going to be going straight to Village of Outcast, which I feel like is would probably be the better play. Yeah. Lots of stuff. Without a fire rod, I don't want to skip the lamp. Yeah, and we don't have... Is, where, oh, sorry. Where, is that, where is that lamp going to be? A pesky lamp. We we know we'll need it for Eastern, by logic, as well as Turtle Rock, and uh, yeah, <laughs> other places. Eh, I just don't like to skip it for the fire source. Mm -hmm. I mean, oh yeah, that's true. Runners can do dark rooms, so yeah, that's not really a concern. But habit of fire source is kind of necessary. But you know, right now, once they get into the dark world, we'll have. Portion of Skull Woods. We'll have all of Thieves Town. Um, 
And that's that's pretty much and pod. They can get to pod. But yeah, we got, you know, two dungeons, two crystal dungeons that they can't complete. And a, a, a penda dungeon that they can complete. <laughs> so not really ideal. So we're gonna be we're gonna be looking for some better items right now. That is true. Ben is opting to go into Skullwoods here, as is the uh, the V27 meta, or meme, as it were. As it were. Finding a heart container. So there's <laughs> item number one. And using the new, newish route of going into the actual door first to try and like find an item or a key. So then you don't have to actually go into route. the party gibdo room. Oh yeah, that's I like that name for it. I wonder what the probability of there being a small key in that chest, in that first chest that Ben checked is. I don't know. Ooh, Ooh flute. flute. All right. That's something. I mean, that's our death mount. Yeah, our death mount access by the logic. Yep, and it's also all the items here in Skull Woods. So Ben is just gonna nope out of here. Probably check Bumper Cave and then Village of Outcasts, Thieves Town. Yeah, Maybe it looks not. like Chris I don't know. Is, is gonna be skipping out on that flute for now. Hopefully he'll make his way up there. But it really depends on what that flute brings us. Do you um, do that? If Oh, oh, oh bombos! That's on the table, and a mushroom in chess game. Just do it, Ben. Just do it. He doesn't right. wanna. He wants to know if he needs it, but you know that could be our way of completing Ice Palace sometime in the future. Who knows? Yeah, that's why I would grab it. Like, if, if it was it ether, were... if it would, e if it, if it was ether, a quake maybe leave it. But bombos is pretty important. Yeah, oh. that's why I would take it. We got a hook shot in the bombable hut. So Village of Outcasts and Skullwoods. I mean, you know, our the light world was pretty light mm. on items. So of course everything had to be like in the dark world, in Village of Outcasts. And Hype Cave was garbage, so of course everything is over here. So we're now getting closer and closer <laughs> to a swamp palace play. <laughs> or or hookshot plus flute. Plus hammer, tower para. Oh right, right, right. Yeah, I forgot about the flute. We can get to East Death Mountain as well. Yeah. Hopefully, find a lamp or some sort of fire source for the means to complete all of uh, Tower para if that basement is required. So, so yeah. I'm wondering if Ben goes into. Yeah, I wonder. Thieves Town. Thieves Town is one of those dungeons that you personally, I always want it to be a crystal because. Right. It's like your safety Dark World dungeon. It's like, okay, I can always do this. There's four items in here. It's always worth doing. But whenever it's a pendant, you're like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know if I want to do this. Yeah. One of these runners might even just do like the first four only and then nope out of here. Chris doesn't really have anything to do other than go into Skull Woods and get that flute. But Ben has so many locations to check on Death Mountain. It's insane yeah. how many locations there are. I could easily see Christos finishing all of this dungeon while Ben bails out, um, just because he has to save and quit in order to go activate that flute. And, you know, he's got to have Death Mountain on his mind right now. But, you know, imagine finding, like, the Titan Mitts in here or something in its vanilla location, which would allow you to do all the Dark World stuff on Death Mountain as well. Yeah, Ben is the sort of player... I don't think Ben's the sort of player to quit out like this and then just uh, leave a dungeon unfinished. Well, there's always a rule that goes around. <laughs> you start a pen to dungeon, finish it. Yeah, some players recently have f forgotten that rule. Yeah. And paid the price. Or they see that rule and they still disobey it. <laughs> 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 so we already got two items in here we got a big 20 and a heart container and we got the big key and the small key so we're still looking for two more items we have the means of checking every single item there's a good chance that even pendant blind could have something and of course there's always the legend of the pedestal seed potential um we're a little too early to start making those kind of assessments yeah. um but chad by all means you know go wild if you want to <laughs> 
I personally haven't seen a pedestal seed in quite some time, and the gambler's fallacy states that that means a pedestal seed is coming up, so I one. believe it. Yeah. Well, it's going to be interesting seeing both these players once they finish this dungeon, you know. Will Christos go up into Skull Woods and find his flute? Um, will he grab that Bombos medallion if he does that? I mean, I can't imagine he would go anywhere else at this point. You can't do the blacksmiths because you don't have Titan Mitts. Um, he's got nothing else to do here, so he'll more than likely go into Thieves or into Skull Woods, unless Thieves Town has our next progression item, like the Titan Mitts. That is true. Although I'm betting East Death Mountain, or just Death Mountain, has like Death Mountain in general, including Hera, as our next value item. Mm -hmm. I would love to see like the lamp in here, or you, yeah, lamp, not the fire rod. We're not there yet. Fire rod can wait. Ooh, just a heart piece. So we're down to the last item, which is gonna be on blind. I think. I. We just have got a hard the time keeping count. We just got the map. Heart piece was right here. Or no. Yeah, that was the map. Heart piece was in the big chest. Compass was, I think, at the bombable floor. So, moment of truth. We'll find out on Christos' side first if Thieves Town was worth the trouble. So far, the answer is no. Well, Chris also seems to be the sort of player who will leave a pendant dungeon if he finds all the items. I think he did that in the last race. But, again, he doesn't, or he doesn't have the mirror, so it's hard to get out of here without mm. beating the boss or saving and quitting, and Christos probably doesn't want to do that because he wants to do Skull Woods right now. 300 rupees. Waste of time, probably. Possibly a waste of time. Possibly. Well, that's the thing. Got is that. like, bailing out of Thieves Town, let's say you get the fourth item and you're bringing the Maiden. You're like, do I just go ahead and bring the Maiden and beat the dungeon in case it's a pedestal seed? Because you don't want to have to backtrack all the way back down to the Maiden's cell to grab him again. Yeah, the no. weirdest play I've ever seen was somebody brought the maiden to Blind's hut or like the blind room, like initiated the blind fight, and then left. <laughs> like just save and quit or mirrored out. One of the two. <laughs> wow. I mean, if you're that far, you might as well go ahead and finish it because you know you you're not going to get that free phase one. Yeah. Um, on your return, so. But yeah, Chris is going for the Bombos Medallion, while Ben yeah. is mirroring out. I like that play. Mm -hmm. Agreed. I mean, we both already talked about it, so... <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be making their way up to Death Mountain, and we'll probably be the first time that they check what's at Lumberjack. Or, no, no, no. I stand corrected. They're going to go get their, mirror, or their flute activated and then just flute up there. So, I guess Ben's just going to keep... Continuing, assuming that there's nothing of value at the Lumberjack Cave. Which so I don't blame him. Yeah. We don't have boots. We, we have Darkhold access. Aghanim is just not even, like, interesting. No even reason to think about it. What a lot of players like to do is put off the Lumberjack check until they have boots, and then they can combo the, uh, the Bonk Rocks with Lumberjack Cave. Because... You know, this could easily be a bootsless seed, so why even put the time into checking that location? True. Though, that Crystal Desert Palace is always like, hmm. Desert Palace is just such a weird, it's a weird dungeon, because far off in the knot, it's either, it's a pendant dungeon and you have, like, immediate access to it, or it's a crystal dungeon and it's, like, one of the last ones you do. Just because of the amount of weird item or the amount of items that it takes to like get into desert palace i mean you could get in there with just a book but but the other option is always you know flute titan mitts mirror <laughs> yeah so ben checking the uh, mushroom giving him nothing but a big 20 but he also notably drinks a red potion to make way for a blue potion to be bought Yes, because they did find... Oh, wow. Speaking of, speaking of, there's the boots right on the desert ledge. Wow. We were just, we, you know, we were talking about him. And he's like, ooh, okay, I'll, here I am. <laughs> Heard you guys were talking about me. So, yeah, we're going to be looking for either that book 
to get those, or that Titan Mitt's mirror scenario. Now, we know that the mirror is required because of Swamp Palace, so I could see that happening, being that... Sin I could, I could see it being that scenario of having to get the, the myths and the flute, or the, the mirror. And 30 minutes in, and both our runners are pretty much neck and neck. Ben's got some potions, a little bit more information. And they're both going to Death Mountain right at the exact same time. Yeah, Ben has a few more checks. And Chris here is notably not checking the old man. So that could be interesting. Yeah, we've seen that hurt players in the past um, in this tournament of skipping that old man. Because, you know, generally people always do it regardless. Like you sequence break this like almost every single time. It's rare that you have lamp to go like when you save the old man. So if you're breaking from your muscle memory of and not doing it, it's an easy one to forget and then never do it. So. Yeah, Ben. Oh. <laughs> Speaking of sequence breaks, we got the fire rod. We got both rods. That's a, that's a great sequence break because now Ben doesn't have to care about the lamp at all. Exactly. Whereas Chris, like, if he doesn't get the lamp until somewhere really trolly, like, say, I don't know, Mimic Cave, it could really hurt him. <laughs> like, that right there is a huge game changer. So hopefully... Christos does go back and check that at some point. Because here's the thing. Let's say they go up to Tower... They do the whole route all the way around. They go up to Tower Kara. And let's say something's in the basement. You know, that's required. You know, Ben would be able to full clear Tower of Hera. Well, Christos might not get to. So we'll see. Or, even or, more bad for Christos, what if Hera is fire blocked and there's a mirror at Moldorm? <laughs> right. That too. That fire rod. Well, that's the thing, though. I guess it depends on the logic. So, you know, because you need the lamp to get the fire rod. So, by that logic, you know, the lamp has to be accessible if there's the next progression item in Tower of Hera. So, yeah. but we'll see. We'll see. We did find, you know, Paradox Cave was kind of a bust. I mean, we're still waiting on Spiral Cave, but we did get the red mail. So, that's, you know, something to be kind of excited about. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the reason I said mirror is just because having to revisit Hera is so incredibly slow if you don't have a mirror. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, backtracking through Hera basement is not fun. And we're gonna we're about to find out if this Hera basement is fire blocked. Moment of truth. It's it is. Oh my. Well, this is huge. So Ben will be able to full clear this dungeon when he gets there, which, you know, it's a crystal. It's required. And we haven't Looks seen like what's Ben's... in the spectacle. Yeah, hmm? Ben didn't attempt a bomb jump there. Or unless he did and messed up. He has full health. Hmm. He just took the long way around back into Paradox Cave from above. <laughs> Oh, it looks like Christos is about to go get his fire rod. So that's good. That's good for Chris. <laughs> well, okay. As soon as that dead rock got out of the way. So this is good, but he is going to lose a bit, a little bit of time having to go back up to do Tower of Hera. And because the general route is, because he didn't do Spiral Cave. Because a lot of times you'll go up to Tower of Hera, finish it, and then go do Spiral Cave. But at the same time, he hadn't done Spectacle Rock, so. Hmm, I don't know. I'm wondering if Christos goes right back to Hera, though. It's one item. But it's also He's a got, crystal. Yeah. Well, what are, what are his other options are... We don't have any more stuff at Skull Woods. We already got both items there. Um, we just have Pyramid and Pod. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I was looking at Christos' uh, little rage turn. Oh, did you do some slashes? Nah, uh, I was just jiggling the d-pad oh, I guess we do we do have spike cave glove hammer cape and bottle or half magic mm -hmm. so we got some options I know which one is gonna be but 
Ben is I'm, having. I'm no kind of on. I'm I'm kind of on board with your whole mirror in at Moldorm scenario. <laughs> ben is not happy with his towel room right now. Yeah, he's he's wasting a little like seconds every time he hits that switch again. <laughs> I think tiles are one of those things that does one heart regardless, mm -hmm. unless I'm wrong. Yeah, kind of so like spikes. Be... Yeah, like any trap, I guess, like does one heart of damage for some reason. And he could have set up a death warp if he really wanted to. Yeah, that is true. Because there are definitely more tiles than he has HP. This could be a little bit of time save for Christos if he does the actual death warp. Although I don't know if these guys have fairies in bottles. They have a red, a green, and then Ben has a, a B-Torp that he found in Agona's cave. So it's like, yeah, Christos is going to be setting up that death warp. <laughs> Poor Link. So whereas Chris came to the mountain a little bit ahead, Ben has a pretty decent lead in Hera right now, and they've checked pretty much exactly the same things. Actually, Ben has checked a little bit more of the overworld. Mm -hmm. Mostly just checking desert, I think, is the only other thing that he has. But Christos does have that Bombos medallion, so if yeah. that ends up being required, he won't have to go. Ben will have to go back to go get that. Christos also has the sacrilegious full heartbeat speed, so I hope you enjoy that, chat. Aw, oh, who set that up? Who did that? <laughs> Alright, Moldorm. Did we... I'm a... Did we see the other item in here? I was watching Christos die. Uh, I, I, was, I didn't check. Seems Hera was... A bunch of garbage. So, another another dungeon with nothing really going for it. So, so what do we have now? We House have Darkness. Pod Pyramid, Catfish, Spike Cave, Spiral Cave. Ooh, right. Um. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's I don't, it. I think that's it. And Zora. You know, they could do all the fake flipper Zora shenanigans if they want to. Did Christos do Spiral Cave? No, I think he went straight into Hera, and then he hopped down, checked Spectacle, then did Old Man. So he'll probably go do Spiral Raid after this. That was an interesting skip for him then, because, I mean, he didn't get any other real value up here. It's a very interesting scene so far. Something's got to give. Yeah, my money's on Palace of Darkness or Desert. Or, there's the boots. We have boots now. Yeah. Is Ben and hopefully Chris is assuming he goes there next, which I think he will. I'm yeah, pretty sure he will. Uh, we'll be able to get the boots. That opens up. Well, the book opens up all of Desert plus the boots, so they'll be able to complete it because they have fire sources and glove. Um, that also opens up Bonk Rocks, King's Tomb. Um, so, um, <laughs> Christos, please. So that's also uh, you, interesting. That's really annoying, though, because you have to do Spiral Cave to get the book. Yeah. Which is not convenient to go back to Ether Tablet to check it, so. Okay, if Mirror is in Ether Tablet, that is one of the biggest trolls, like individual trolls I can think of. That would be pretty funny. But, I mean, fortunately for these players, is they'll be able to combo Ether Tablet into Spike Cave at some point. That's um, true. They also still need to find another sword if they want to get anything from Ether Tablet, so that's not going to even be an option until they get another sword. So we do have a boots block, but it doesn't matter because we know where the boots are. That is probably the most convenient. Like, boots either there or at Agonist Cave is like. <laughs> Actually, Agonist Cave would probably be worse. Or even in the map chest. <laughs> I think it's a map chest. <laughs> Stabbing that chest. Well, at least he knows where to go next. I hope. Yeah, that's... I gotta say, Christos is kind of making a few weird mistakes. I... 
I don't think skipping the old man is generally what he does. So it might have just been a... Or it might have been just like a last second, like, well, I don't feel like sequence breaking, so... Yeah. I think it's that. There's just a general distaste for sequence breaking in this version. And in the meta. I gotta say, though, like, the... The light, the lampless sequence breaks are probably the safest sequence breaks to make. Mm -hmm. Especially if you have that fire up, which, again, <laughs> you kind of needed it. Yeah. And I mean, like, fire rod helps with the uh, the pod dark rooms, at least in the turtle rooms, like the ones downstairs. Uh, but we don't have a bow, so that's not really an option right now. Yeah, unfortunately, it's going to be kind of a slow desert. Ben is going to have to either run back, like, all the way over. Oh, there's our lamp, by the way. <laughs> cool. All right, so the game wanted you to... <laughs> hey. And the cane, okay. Uh, well, I'm, I'm feeling, uh, like, Titan Mitts to Bombos Medallion T-Rock, maybe, at this point. Um, it looks like Ben is going to skip out on finishing the dungeon, uh, which I don't think is a bad play. He's got to... Actually, I guess he's going to save it until later if he has to go back and do Mire. Um, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, it's starting to look like Turtle Rock is the play, you know, once we get the mitts. So the game wanted you to get the flute in Skullwoods to go to Death Mountain to get the book in Spiral Cave, to get the, the lamp and cane in Desert, to go back up to Death Mountain to get the fire rod. <laughs> yep. So... <No. laughs> well, we haven't checked with the boots unlocked, but that's because, you know, it's one item. Can't check King's Tomb yet because we need the mitts or the mirror. Yeah, and if we find the mirror some t somewhere in the pyramid or catfish... Ben might be able to just hookshot over there and do all that stuff anyway. Mm -hmm. So let's recap a little bit. Yeah, sure. We have found everything in Eastern, but we don't have mm -hmm. the bow to complete it. We've There's nothing in Hera. I don't know if there's anything in Desert. We got both items in Desert. Okay. Yeah, we got both items in Desert, the lamp and the, and the red cane. We haven't entered Pod at all on either side. Swamp Palace is still blocked. Skull Woods is clear of items, but it is a crystal. They'll have to return there eventually, but I don't see it happening for a while. Ice Palace, Misery Mire, and Turtle Rock are all blocked by the mitts. So I'm feeling a mitts and pod scenario, maybe. Yeah, and in terms I... of, like, overworld, what else is there like that isn't blocked by mitts? Spike Cave? Batman? Batcave? Bat <laughs> we just got Batcave access. Wow, the seat is kind of weird. I've, I've, I've never seen it. Like, the fact that we have Skullwoods and Desert Palace cleared of items, but we still have to go back and get the crystals is kind of hilarious, if you think about it. Yeah, I mean, that's kind of common in this, this day and age, isn't it? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I feel them. like with Skullwoods, you generally always... You'll get one item in the in the first half, and the second item's in the second half. Mm. So Christos has taken the Palace of Darkness bait. It is a green pendant. We can't clear it yet. It could be bow, bow blocked, or it could have the bow in it. In fact, it could be, even be a bow lock seed, or bow key lock seed. The worst is doing pod without the mirror. And wanting to death warp, but having red mail, which makes it harder. I think Ben is actively avoiding Palace of Darkness right now. Well, let's we'll see can... about that. Well, it looks like he's going to go check Bonk Rocks. He's going to be trying to... He's following the breadcrumbs, and so far the breadcrumbs have not been helping him. Um, ben? Ben? Ben. Ben. <laughs> ben, please. <laughs> ben! <laughs> Mistakes were made. And okay, good, good. No, no, no. It's good to see at least flubs on both ends. But yep. yeah, you know, it's a game three scenario. These guys are apparently, oh wow, Master Sword and Palace of Darkness. So, hey, Ether Tablet. Mm -hmm. That's true. 
Um, right now, the standings in both tournaments combined is these players are four and four. Um, wait, that can't be right. Because Ben won three two in the last tournament, and now we're one and one. Unless there's. Oh wait, didn't they? Ra they raced in the in the Swiss rounds, didn't they? Yeah, they had a race in Swiss, I think. Okay, that's that's why. Christos won. Yeah, yeah, Christos won that. So this there's a lot online, guys. This this is a big match, yo. Yeah, Ben is still not really wanting to go to Palace of Darkness. Instead, choosing to sequence break here into the waterfall. Probably going to Zora as well. Waterfall has nothing but some extra bombs and some money. Chris is only getting a Master Sword out of that, which, of course, is a required item. We need that Master Sword, but that doesn't really unlock too much other than Ether Tablet, so the answer could very well be Ether Tablet or Spike Cave at this point. But well, we're not going to be seeing that. <laughs> Yeah, and Ben has done a bit more overworlds. Christos is going to be playing catch up a bit here, I think, while Ben gets nothing from Zora. Oof. So where do we go? It's got to be Ether Tablet or Spike Cave at this point. What I mean, we don't have anything left. Ice Palace is not on the table. Meyer is not on the table. T Rock isn't on the table. As soon as we like, the next item has to be either the Mirror or the Myths. Oh, but, looks like wait. that's where Ben is heading. Because the mirror will unlock the mirror spots. But that's it. Because we still need the flippers to get in the swamp. Hmm. See, th when you said before you could combo Spike Cave and the Ether Tablet, I, I like that idea, but Ben is not doing that. Ben is just going directly. Uh, it Spike looked Cave. like he was going to try and do that and then realized he didn't have the mirror. <laughs> okay. Because <laughs> he started running to the left, so. You know. But, you, you gotta kind of assume. Out. You gotta kind of assume that the seed's gonna troll you with yeah. uh, book at spiral, master sword and pod to go back to ether. Like I could easily see the game doing that to them, but we'll see. It's worth pointing out that ooh, another sword here in Spike Cave. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. All right. I just I just realized something. Ben couldn't have checked Ether Tablet. Well, he could have checked it, but he couldn't have got gotten it even if he wanted to at that point. But he's going there now. Anyway, yeah, that's that's a good point. That's a good point. Anyway, and that is oh sewer chest ruble. Forgot about that that's one. That's true. Because we got the dungeon map was in Zelda cell, and the small key was in the back of escape, the bomb hole. So. This could be, this could very well be our Titan Mitz or Mirror, or just a, some sort of progression item. Yeah, this is, hmm. this is why I like to check this early, because I forget about it otherwise. Yeah. But it's worth noting that these runners, like any runner, it's a lot more stressful doing a tournament race like this, and that can really impact your ability. <laughs> Oh my god. There goodness. it is! Oh man, imagine they could have had this at the beginning of the game. <laughs> yeah. So but that's nobody a, likes a nice that's boon. a Yeah, that's a rough sequence break. We need like Mir to be at Ether Tablet for Ben, otherwise this is looking pretty rough. <laughs> the bug net! Same thing, right? Now we yeah, can go fight Agon. Well here's Great. the thing. That mitz gives us access to we have Pendant Meyer. We have ice. No, not yet. That would be a sequence break. So basically, Pennant Meyer and Dark World Death Mountain slash potentially this could be an early T Rock um, seed. Yeah, this could also be Mirror in the Purple Chest, which is like the worst thing. Oh yeah. We did and unlock all that blacksmith stuff. Oh, and Ben's gonna be going for the beginning of Escape, which we know is nothing. There's nothing down here except for I believe a green potion so but yeah oh uh, but with this i wonder if he'll go back he'll probably go back and check the sewer chest but you know setting up a death warp with a red tunic it's not very ideal yeah it sucks you'd probably be fast just to save and quit and run back up there usually i like to just take damage as i'm going through here just bump into the guards like <laughs> until i get to the end fall down the hole like 50 times yeah maybe Mm. Alright, Hookshot Cave, what do you got for us? 
Big 20. Big 20. Big 20. There Big 20. Go. There's a bow. Okay. Big 20 bow. Well, what does that tell us? We don't Palace have an item is. at Eastern Palace, but we can complete it now, which gives us one of our Pyramid Fairy Crystals and is Ether at Total Rock. So that Bombos Medallion might actually not come into play. Yeah, pretty much, unless Meyer is required and it is Bombos, it's pretty much dead. Oh, this is Christos huge. is getting tempered here. Yeah, that is huge. That is a nice thing to have. Um, but if the logic pushes them towards Palace of Darkness in the Bowlock sections, you know, Ben will eventually get his temper sword as well. But Ben needs to go back to Hyrule Castle and go to that sewer chest, which it looks like he is. So that's that's good. He's yeah, not going to be too far behind. It's such a pain of a seed, honestly. I personally, I would have gone and and done the dark sewer just because I I don't want to forget about it. And they did have the they did have a weapon coming in here, right? They had a they didn't have a sword, but they no. had a hammer. Did they? No, because they got glove in Mini Moldron Cave, so. They didn't have... They went there before they went to Sahasula. Sahasula was their first weapon, which was the hammer. So that's probably why they didn't continue to go through it, because it's not really fun when you don't have a light source or, a, or like, a weapon. Um, okay. It probably explains why they put it off for so long. And I think what what happened was they did the back of escape first. Yeah. Or at least... And, and you don't want to... They didn't have a weapon at the time, mm -hmm. so it wasn't feasible. But I think Christos did the front of escape with the hammer, and therefore would have been able to get through there with quote-unquote relative ease. Right. He could have, yeah, he could have set up the, the death warp and gone to there and all that stuff. But I know that is one of those really obnoxious dark rooms to do. So I don't, I don't blame the players for putting that off. And at the same time, like, with how late the lamp was, it was an easy spot to forget. I'm... do. I'm thinking Christos is doing Skullwoods right now as a, sort of a buffer to try and, like, collect his think, thoughts. Yeah. This place doesn't really get any faster, unless you were to get, say, like, half magic or something, but I think Christos is good enough at the game where he can just kill Mothiola with Tempered Sword. <laughs> I mean... Oh yeah, I don't think uh, easily point is gonna have trouble with that. Uh, it's only un the only unfortunate thing is the fact that he doesn't have mirrors, so he couldn't at least check the pedestal while we were he was there. Speaking of, at this point, what could the pedestal be? Um, it can be because we can com we've completed thieves. We can complete Palace of Darkness. If Flippers. Bombos is the medallion for Meyer, then. Ether could be on the pedestal, Flippers could be on the pedestal, Mirror can be on the pedestal. So those are pretty it. much our options, yeah. And just as you said, that Mafia went down quick. We did see all of the items here in Skull Woods. Chris was just kind of doing it to, again, collect his thoughts. So with that bow in hand, where do you go? I think Ben is probably going directly into Palace of Darkness. I don't know. It's a tough call because he did just get the mitts, which unlocks a lot of stuff. Oh. He's going for the Meyer check. He's going to find out if he needs that Bombos medallion or not. Yeah, I think that's actually a better idea. Even if Meyer is a pendant, it's, it's good a quick to check. get these items out of the way. Yeah, I mean, he's only going to be able to get two items. It's. Ether? I have no idea what that was. It looked I... like ether. Let me see if I can check it on the other. I, I couldn't tell. <laughs> so no real value here in Mire. Not having the mirror to actually check checkerboard cave either. And desert's already cleared out. So Ben's probably going to go to the Palace of Darkness. Or maybe he'll check the dwarves and the peg cave. It's like he's going for Pod, which I, like this play. I did too. Um, the only unfortunate, well, let's say, you know, there's a good chance he could find the mirror in here. He is going to get his tempered sword as well, which he's going to be happy to find. 
Yeah. Um, but yeah, if he can find the mirror in here, then he'll be able to just mirror Venice Eastern Palace and check checkerboard kit, you know, do some other stuff. So. Yeah, I think Christos is doing something similar, but he's a bit more pessimistic about finding the mirror in Palace of Darkness. He's clearing out Eastern right now, which has no more items, I'm pretty sure. Correct. The last one we got was the Ice Rod. But, he's. You know, I he mean... Go down and enter. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta do this anyway, and there's really... When you have the Boots and Tempered Sword and Silvers, you know, there's really... Like you were saying before, there really isn't any faster way of clearing these dungeons, these bosses, so might as well just get it out of the way now. And it does give you kind of a chance to kind of meditate, kind of relax, kind of clear your thoughts, kind of start planning ahead. Since, you know, by this point, this game is... A, this is all muscle memory to these players. Mm -hmm. So Chris is already at Armos, where Ben has only just got the first chest in Palace of Darkness. So I think Chris has a bit of an advantage here, especially considering he's already cleared a lot of the front side of Palace of Darkness. I guess it's also worth pointing out that Eastern Palace is one of the Pyramid Fairy crystals, so... But we're still two items away from Swamp, so the, I the Pyramid Fairy can't be two of the three required items that we need. We're even on swords now, finally. Although Ben does have to fall down here, doesn't get the quick vanilla big key chest check, which is often just a key for a key anyway. Yeah. Ben might but... even skip it until he's like done with Helm Sword. I think it was a heart piece in this one, but. All right, let's see if we can see what medallion it is. It is ether. Okay, so double ether. So pedestal's dead. No, it's not dead. We still are looking for mirror and flippers, but it can't be one of the medallions. Yep, the swamp access care package is currently <laughs> potentially in pedestal. So all you swamp lovers out there, like, I don't know, hope for a pedestal seed. <laughs> Now, someone in chat was talking about potentially sequence breaking Ice Palace. Ugh. If you, if I was in go mode minus flippers, yeah, totally, because you know that flippers can't be in there. But since they're looking for mirror and ether, like you'd just be sequence breaking to potentially get some information, but you'd still have to full clear that dungeon. Mm -hmm. I love this strat that Ben does because. I realize this as well, just playing casually or, or like playing practice seats. Those little beetles get in the way when you try to jump off that ledge. So you have to like walk in the room below to reset them. Mm -hmm. I've seen players, I've seen like, Canis, sorry, I only half listened to what you said. So I might repeat what you just said, but using a Canis Mario to kind of block them from getting to you. Oh, there's Ether. All right, that's two of the three items we, we need. It's really good. Um, Christmas is also showing us new ground here. Going to be doing Peg Cave here. And if Mirror is inside, we'll probably be mirroring out and delivering the dwarf. Otherwise, we'll be seeing a save and quit, most likely. Just the bombs. So yeah, that's the, the downside. Since Christos already has been to Pod, he's more than likely not wanting to go back there. It is a green pendant, though, and it is clearable. Yeah. That's true. So Ether opens up both Meyer and T-Rock, which both, which both players, well, Ben particularly, can complete both of them if needed. So Flippers, Mirror, Pedestal, meh. It is true. Do you see Ben going to Helmosaur if, uh... Oh, he's thinking about it. He's going with an O. We got a green rupee from the blacksmith, so... This is a little worrisome. You know, here's the thing, though. Pod, like, of course, you know, he might have to go back later. It's a gamble. But at the same time, we did get two required items out of Pod. So it, it's a, not a bad gamble to skip out on that, because you're like, I, there's no way there'd be three required items in Pendant Palace of Darkness, right? Especially when I have <laughs> all of T-Rock. Um, all of Meyer. Uh, it's a I don't, think, I don't think Ben is very happy with this scene and how he's been playing it so far. That's why he skipped it out on it. Christos, on the other hand, he might probably go ahead not completely. that happy either. 
you know, he, I know, because like, here's the thing. This is his second time to pod. He's not going to want to have to make a third. Yeah, but again, it's it's another one of those things. Like you gotta assume that these bad locations are, you know, not required if you think you're behind. Yeah, and he's already got to be thinking he's behind because of the few flubs that he's made, and you know, this being his second time in a pod. But it looks like I'm going for the T Rock play. He has the means to complete it. Might as well. The only thing to worry about is that mimic cave location. That is true. Although, not seeing the mirror so far is really suspect. It could easily be in Mire, but still, like, I, I don't want to... I'm not banking on that eventuality, like... Uh -huh. You know, me mirror on, like, the Mire bridge. I've seen it so many times. Uh, the nice thing about this seed, though, is that these players will get to go mode swamp, no matter what, so... That's a nice feeling. Because we need Mirror to get in, and we need Flippers to beat it. So, and those are our last two items. Yep, at least we won't be seeing a non-Go Mode Swamp. At least we won't have to worry about players skipping the left side of Swamp and having Sweet. that cost them the game. <laughs> not this time. Like, there's not even any safeties that we haven't seen yet that these players might want. Like, we have silvers, we have tempered, who cares? Um, even that Ruble, we haven't powder. seen a single shield. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> you should be. <laughs> that is kind of impressive. We have, we've got red tunic, we got level three sword, but not a single shield in sight. Um, of course, we have the cape, so laser bridge is within logic, so it's not a big deal. Chris is now picking up his Ethan medallion and thinking, ha, ah, great, wonderful, thanks. Because yeah. here's the thing, had Christos taken his small key, oh wait, no. He had a 50-50. He could either use the small key to check the vanilla big key location or take the small key into the back, in which he would have gotten Ether the first time he was here. Yeah, a lot of players will try and just there's... dive as deeply. Well, there's a shield. So I got what I wanted. That's good. You can have your shield. I'll take, you know, flippers and mirror. <laughs> um, anyway, a lot of players will like to just dive into Palace of Darkness because they know, you know, that's where most of the good items lie. And they'll just leave as many key doors locked in the front side as they can. Mm -hmm. And I think in this case, Christos would have come out ahead, although he probably would have went into the dark maze. Let's be real here. Well, I mean, if, if anything, he could have, you know, hammer jumped into there. I'm surprised we haven't seen any hammer jumps, but hammer jump as like his last option just to save a small key. I don't know. Pod is a silly place. So, Ruble, we had someone ask in chat, what is your least favorite dungeon in this game? My least favorite dungeon in the game is. I don't even know. <laughs> I, I kind of like. I, I think it's yeah, it's Turtle Rock. I hate it. <laughs> really? Sorry. Yeah. Why is that? Too long. It's long and boring. And too many lasers. Yeah. Too many. There's lasers. really like only one way to route it, pretty much. Yeah. Like the only like difference you can have in a in a T Rock play is skip big chest or not. That's it. But most people don't play that. Make that gamble. And good thing you didn't, because he needed that small key. So despite the fact that both players are going to be in the same dungeon, and Ben has a bit of a lead in this dungeon, Christos does have two more crystals on Ben, having gone back and finished Eastern and finished Skull Woods. Oh, there's our flippers. That does give us access to Ice Palace. So Mirror could very easily be there, or it could still be here in Turtle Rock. As if I was one of these players, I would have been wishing for Mirror first. Because yeah. the idea of Mirror being in Ice Palace is a little sickening. Because that's one of those other really... I gotta say, Ice Palace is probably my least favorite. Just because I still don't 100% understand the logic of the seed. Or of the dungeon and how it all works. I just bomb jump everything. Yeah. 
I don't 100% agree with the quote-unquote logic <laughs> in Ice Palace, at least the, the logic implemented by the devs, but that's another story. Ooh, fighting words. And we got the red boomerang. So we got both boomerangs on Ben's side. And some clutch laser skips. And yep, so that's it. Only the flippers in Total Rock, but we will be able to finish it, get a crystal out of here, and then Ben will never have to come back this way ever again. So flippers, all that does is unlock ice. Yep. We so, also saw huh. everything else that the flippers blocks, right? Yeah, we saw there was nothing in Zoro's domain. And both players did make... Well, except I think Christos didn't do the fairy cave yet. Because he didn't do the fake flipper stuff. Yeah, he might actually do that first. But knowing Christos, I think he's probably going to stick to dungeons. Yeah. Ben did everything else. He did the waterfall cave. He did Zora. I think he did Hobo. And I think he also did like Hylia. Or he checked it, obviously. So, so Christos might have a little bit of time here. He's going to waste coming out of Turtle Rock. So these players have pretty much, after this, they have two options. Pendant Mire or Ice Palace. Ice Palace. Yeah. Although, I mean, if you're Ben or Christos. It's, it's, it's a tough call because it's like you could go into Mire. It's like the pendant, the value of the pendant dungeon is, you know, ridiculous these days. If you get the mirror, then you can go mode Ice Palace, but if you find the mirror in Ice Palace, then you go mode the rest of it. Mm -hmm. So it's it's a real, gosh, it's a really tough choice. Like, I personally would not want to be in these runner's shoes, because that's like a that's not a fun decision to make. So let's see what his decision is. Also, I think Ben thinks he's behind. I think both of these runners have reason to think that they're behind, and... Ben is probably doing the same thing Christos did before, and is just making up his mind while clearing out Mothula. I mean, you don't need a brain to fight Mothula. That's so, right. Just slash at it until it dies, I think. Yeah, it is unfortunate not finding the mirror in the Palace Darkness area, which would allow them to, or at least Ben to finish Eastern immediately afterwards. So he'll still have to go back over there to get that crystal. But I wonder if he's going to make the play on blacksmiths after this. Uh, I don't. W I don't want him to do it, but he might. <laughs> I'd rather Ben just go to ice. Yeah, it's a tough call. The nice thing is, Ben did save a little bit of time, not having to get that Bombos medallion from the ledge, since now we know that is completely useless. No, you know, without half magic. Bombos is kind of nice against Cold Stare, but at the same time, these players know what they're doing. Yeah, tempered Cold Stare isn't that bad. As long as you don't miss that one Fire Rod. Though I think at this time, both players do have green potions if something goes wrong. Yeah, and Ben even has a blue. Also, I never tire of seeing that torch room here in the back of Swamp Palace done by like people who are at who are good at the game. Oh, the, the little dash through the Gibdo room in Skull Woods? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's always really nice. So Chris also correctly realizes that he has everything in this dungeon. Just going directly to Trinex. Ben making a complete mockery of Mothula. Mothula giving him a good pattern. Ramming his face into a, into a sword over and over. It's always nice when you get that good pattern that they just keep on moving into the center. Sometimes Mafia just loves this hide up in the corner with his little spike buddies. So where's Ben going? He might actually just clear out Eastern, honestly. <laughs> or maybe not, I don't know. Because clearing out Eastern might... Oh, he's doing it. Okay. All right. The reason why I would keep Eastern is because he never finished uh, uh, Palace of Darkness. So yeah, neither of them did. 
if they if he needs to come back, that's an extra trip. But yeah. again, I don't know. I mean, he to... got to do it either way, so I guess it's if if it ends up coming down to Sahas really having the mirror or something, mm. or Helmstar. Well, actually, did we see the other dungeon items in? House of Darkness, or do they have all the items and it's just the green pendant that's the potential? Because I honestly don't sure. remember. I do remember seeing Compass in the Dark Maze. So, I don't know. We'll see. Oh, that's yeah. right. King's Tomb is on the table. We did check Bonk Rocks, but we, I don't think we've seen King's Tomb yet. But Christos hasn't checked Bonk Rocks either, I don't think. Yeah, that was the blue boomerang. I remember seeing that on Ben's side. And we have a heart piece. So if Christos keeps checking overworld locations, Ben might have some time to catch up because Ben did check a lot of these locations already. I think the only places Christos has checked that Ben hasn't has been the Dwarf, Blacksmith, and Peg Cave. Mm -hmm. Now I'm wondering, if you're Christos, do you want to bank on that purple chest mirror, the quote-unquote dream? You know, Catfish is also an option for Christos at this point as well. Ooh, yeah. Losing a race to Catfish is never fun. Fortunately, we know that Catfish has just the powder, which led to nothing. I think it led to a heart container or something, so... Yeah. But going back to last race, Christos, you know, just went to, to Hera instead of checking a lot of overworld that he knew Ben was going to check, right? Mm -hmm. It's it's probably the same here with Catfish. Christos knows Ben doesn't skip Catfish. And with the way this seat has been so far, with how stingy it was with that early Dark World access, like you've got to assume that your opponent has done catfish. So if he, if the mirror is there and Ben got it, Christos is already so far behind. Yeah, that's true. But and Ben is doing the purple chest here. We got Ben heading to Ice Palace finally, and Christos will be checking the purple chest. Uh, yeah, if Mir ends up being in a overall location, like... Those single overworld locations are just garbage. They're awful. <laughs> to lose a race to the overworld item location is just... It hurts. So it's like, game, what do you want me to do? And it's just a heart piece, so that's good oh. for Ben. Yeah, so I think this puts Ben squarely in the lead. Both of them are going directly into Ice Palace now. Ben has a little bit of an advantage. Just a slight lead. Ooh, but Christos... Is he going to do... Okay, he's not doing Hobo. There's our first item. So we're one item away from Go Mode, everyone. We are just looking for that mirror, which will allow our players to get into Swamp Palace to complete it. And we'll also make going back to Desert Palace a little bit more convenient, since they do have to go back there and check that as well. At this point, we know that the it cannot be... Uh, it can still be on the pedestal. It can't be at Pyramid Fairy because Swamp Palace is one of the Pyramid Fairy crystals. So basically, the only thing we have left is either Ice Palace or Mire or... Green Pendant? Green Pendant. Maybe one more item in pot. Maybe. Or the pedestal. Or the pedestal. Or Mire. I said that. <laughs> I also already said this. Ruble. Okay, fine. <laughs> Alright, we're gonna see some standard bomb jumps. The standard Ice Palace bomb jump that pretty much anyone that runs this game should know. It's one of the easiest ones. And, you know, the fact that they do have Canis Mario and Hookshot, they don't have to do the bomb jump. Um, especially if they're gonna go ahead and full clear it. But it is definitely nice to have. And, uh, the question is, will we see the other bomb jumps throughout this dungeon as well? Uh, probably. It's interesting to see how the routing in this dungeon has progressed ever since the last tournament. Especially because like the old routing really didn't have you coming here unless you were in go mode most of the time. Mm -hmm. And like all the bomb jumps people have developed since then, I don't know, maybe some of these were known beforehand or maybe they were just developed because you, know, you never come here without a hookshot in vanilla. 
But... Like, I think they already existed. They just weren't popularized as much. But we find the second item is a heart piece, so we're down to one last item. And we do see a little bit of a route divergence. Christos going to the double freeze door room while Ben checking the right side. This could be good for Christos. Yeah, this could be good if this is the item. Oh, okay. this is the big key. So that's good for Ben. Ben will... Christos will be checking the same stuff that Ben is right now. Be right behind him, so... Yeah, that's the route I typically like to take, is what Christos did. I understand why Chris, why Ben went directly towards like the hookshot route, but I like to just see if I can get that early small key if I haven't found one in the first chest. Yeah, because they can need just to go back to... upstairs. Mm -hmm. No, I agree with that 100%. That's usually what I do as well. And fortunately for Ben, finding all three items, so Ice Palace is done. Finding the half magic is our third item. Which is actually a very good night, like a very nice item to have, but it's definitely not the one that they're looking for. So at this point, it's either pedestal, it's either green pendant, or it's in mire. Oh my goodness! And both oh, of these runners, notably, you know, didn't go all the way to Helmosaur. Yeah. So that asks the question: When are they going to go back? And who's going to be the first to actually check the pedestal if that's even in the cards? And will Ben go for the? The pendant dungeons when he still has some overworld stuff left to do like blacksmiths and all that it's a good question i think ben might check pedestals sooner rather than later although at this point you just got to go for the blindfold right <laughs> do have mire oh my god that was beautiful almost getting the the double swing on all three of them yeah, I, I like how earlier I was talking about, you know, using Bombos on Cold Stair, and then they find half magic in there, thus defeating the entire <laughs> statement I was making, so... Yeah. Ben just slightly ahead, grabbing his other crystal. That puts him up to one, two, three, four, five. Five out of seven. Yeah, both of these runners... I mean, we, we know that we need a, need a mirror to beat this game, right? So... <laughs> Desert Palace, none of, none of these runners actually want to do, even though they can do it. I mean, fortunately, it does work out that they need the mirror to beat Swamp, uh -oh. so getting the mirror also allows them to go straight back to Desert from the Maya area instead of using the book. Oh, Christos tossed yep. his fire rod in the wrong direction a couple times, but it's still clearing it, but taking a little bit extra time to complete him. Yeah, his cold stare went a little bit off the rails. Ben is opting to go into Mire, which I don't think is a bad idea. In fact, I think Christos might do this as well. I mean, if both players make the exact same play, then, you know, this will come down to, like, G-Tower shenanigans. Um, but yeah, we'll see what ends up being the right one. I'm still hoping for Mir on that uh, Mire bridge. That'd be, uh, be where I put it. So where are you going, Chris? God, what a beautiful room for Ben. Uh-oh. Making uh -oh. the same play as Ben. All right, this is huge. Honestly, at this point, I kind of just want it to be a pedestal. Yeah, that'd be fun. It would also punish their hubris for uh, skipping out on that green pendant. Also, it was interesting all about. that Ben did take the time to kill the the murder dactyl instead of just freezing it with ether. <laughs> and Christos is depriving us of a meme, unfortunately. Or fortunately. <laughs> is that our last bottle? That is our last bottle and our first item of Meyer. So do they complete Meyer? At this point, if Vitreus doesn't have the item, or do they just leave? I would leave. The, the numbers are, are dwindling of places where we could actually have this mirror. That's true. We're basically down to like three locations. There's our big key. He's gonna go straight for the... Have... Oh, he's going straight for Vitreus. He's making the gamble. I like this play, honestly. Yeah. 
the reason I like it is because it turns the question I just asked into like it just turns it on its head because you're still looking for the item yeah. <laughs> by going directly to Vitreus, but you're also, in the meantime, getting the, that pendant. I think it's a smart gamble, and I could definitely see both players making the play. I mean, when you're down to one last item, it's a good one to ju just go ahead and hop in here, kill Vitreus. Because at, at this point, both players are thinking, hmm, pedestal, hopefully, maybe, no. But I'm going to laugh if it does come down to a Christos Owen triple dip pendant pod. That would give me quite the giggle. <laughs> that would be very interesting. Unfortunately, Ben still has to hit that, that crystal switch. Usually, if you get a fast Mar, you can avoid hitting the switch altogether and making that last dark room pretty easy. Yeah, if uh, the, the big key is in the, the first two items on the right, either the bridge or the spike room, then you could just avoid hitting that switch in its entirety. And we okay. also have a route divergence here. Christos yeah. is uh, clearing the rest of the items. So if this is big. mirror is in here, cool. this could be big. Oh my. Oh, that's huge. Christos. Christos Mad takes man. the lead in a big way. <laughs> And there you have it, everyone. We are in official go mode. Yep, Chris and Owen, finding the mirror in the big chest of Meyer. We'll now hop over, finish up Desert Palace, and then a quick go mode through Swamp Palace, and we're in the clear. Mm -hmm. Ben, thankfully for him at least, is going back inside. He'll probably check the big key or big chest first because it's like right there. Yeah, and you don't have to hit any switches or anything, so he's not going to be too far behind. But it's funny because going in, you know, Ben had a very slight lead, and now even out of Meyer, Christos has a very slight lead. Yeah, Ben is also getting kind of a mean first room here, or I guess second room. Yeah, he missed the the first wizard rub kill, which cost him a little bit of time. So at this rate, you know, this is all execution here on out until we get to G Tower, and then it's going to come down to that big key location. And we'll see if these players have any sort of route diversion. So it's not over, guys. We still got plenty of game left. Mm -hmm. This is a Ruble. This is a quick seed. This is a quick seed. Not as quick as some of the ones I've seen, but still, like 122. We're in go mode, which it seems late, but the crystals that we still have to get are pretty quick. Mm. I don't know what a what a good end time for this would be. Like one. Maybe, I mean, at least sub 140, I'd say. 35 to 140? Yeah, I'd say like a 135. It depends on that G-Tower location. If it's like in the first five chests, then it'll be a quick one. Yeah, Christos using those silver arrows to take out Lane Mola. And more so than other races, I would say this could come down to G-Tower routing because Ben is one to actually mix up his routing pretty significantly. He likes to do, never, you know, never does the same route twice. Well, it's not necessarily that, but it's more like he likes to do the route that he thinks the other person isn't going to do, or the uh -huh. other people aren't going to do. I mean, that's that's why in the first tournament he was the person who did that. You know, if you get a small key in the first two chests, go right. Like, I don't, I don't think other players did that at the time. Everybody else was still doing the whole two chests, go left, you know, no thought about it. Well, we'll find out here pretty soon. Um, that's, you know, when it comes to G-Tower, it would be a rough way to go. It's, you know, get a small key on the right side, and you're like, no, 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 I'm going to be different. I'm going to go left side, and then it ends up being in that compass room. And you're like, oh, I should have just gone for it. But at the same time, you know, when you know who you're up against and you're feeling behind, you have to make the, it's it's all or nothing at this point. You have to make those crazy plays. You have to make the crazy gambles. You got to try and outthink your opponent and do the opposite. Um, unless you know it's one of those like four falls to Moldorm. These things happen. Yeah. So chat is reporting not really much difference between the players, even though Ben did take that. 
I don't even want to call it a gamble, going directly to Vitreus. Like, it could have very easily been on the pedestal. <laughs> so, <laughs> no, I, I thought Vitreus it was, good. was a good I, play. I think it was a good one. Good choice to make. Which, if the big key, when the big key is in that location, it's like, yeah, I might as well just go. Because otherwise you're going to, like, do the the awful vanilla big key location where you have to wait for the, the wall to move or go all the way back over to the big chest, so. I was, I'm still mad that we're not going to see a triple dip pod play from Chris. <laughs> it's very disappointing. I wanted to see that. Yeah. I wanted to punish their uh, pod aversion. And this is exactly why you like go mode, because go mode in Swamp Palace is it's it's pretty satisfying. Yeah, in hindsight, honestly, the Meyer play was probably more obvious than some of the other plays, just because I don't know two pendants or one pendant opening two dungeons, one of them being a crystal, one of them being a pendant. It just seems really suspect to me. A lot of the times you'll get like. You'll get seeds like that where you only get one pendant. <laughs> or not one pendant, one medallion. And then you end up having to visit both dungeons. So yeah, by the logic, the only... We had to go into Pendant Pod to get Aether, just to go into Pendant Mire to get the mirror. Ugh. <laughs> and Thieves Sound was 100% useless, so... Yeah, Christos in the lead. Just about to finish up Argus. Uh, ben not very far behind. Maybe like a minute. Mm -hmm. Depending on how the rest of this fight goes. Ooh. Went for the silver arrow, but accidentally gave him the gave him the sword. Two spins and he's down. Oh look, the big key. Yeah, that big key on Argus is always a source of anxiety if you're not in go mode, but uh these guys are, so it doesn't matter. Swamp Palace is easy and really fun if you're in go mode. Alrighty, guys. It's that time. It's that time to get your guests in. We are looking for a Ganon's Tower big key, and there are 22 chests that that bad boy is going to be hiding in. So, get your guests in. Um, this is open to any of our Speed Gaming subs, anyone that has donated. Uh, 250 bits or two dollars per cent and maybe it's just bits. one of the two and uh if you're right you get your name on a cool leaderboard that i'm not on yet so i'm bad at this game <laughs> it's true though <laughs> Ruble, what do you think it's gonna be refill uh i usually say eight but i put in 10 this time because i saw it was sniped in chat by a certain person who shall remain nameless. Wow, someone has 10 wins? Yeah, I don't Man, know I how that I works. I wish I was that cool. <laughs> I ain't got one. I'm sitting pretty at four. I think that's good for this season. Christos with a very slight lead. It's going to be the first one in GG Tower, so all the big key location checks will be based on his order. Yeah, Ben but... Oh, man. This is crazy, Rubel. It's coming down to potentially just a G Tower gamble um, to determine who makes it into top four. This is quarterfinals. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and remember, this is basically a rematch of the grand finals from last time. It's pretty crazy how, like, how much the uh, the community, or just how much the skill gap has, or skill level has grown in this community, that you know, players that were in the grand finals are now fighting for their lives just to get in the top four. That is true. We've honestly seen a lot of players that I thought could have gone all the way <laughs> get knocked out. Like even even before bracket stage, honestly. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, definitely. Or, you know, they'll make it to bracket and it's like a clean 2-0. They're like, oh, okay, well. But that's just that's just the nature of Rando. All it takes is one mistake and you're out. 
Like, you have to play so perfectly, or hope that your opponent also plays imperfectly if you want to survive. Which yeah. uh, is part of the reason why it's so fun to play, fun to watch. Um, as a viewer, as a commentator, as someone that participated in the tournament and got knocked out quickly. <laughs> it's it's fun, and you just got to treat it like that. It's just a it's just a fun little game. But yeah, coming up, we got chest number three, four, five, and six. Interesting, interesting options. Christos not sh not grabbing that small key. That's extra interesting. Ben is going full left, or maybe dark magician. We've got so some options. That ice? Yeah. So we got we got the Dark Magician strat, which is generally go to the Stalfos room and mirror out. To go to your right side, we got the VTorp strat, which is to go. Well, I don't know. This is kind of a weird hodgepodge of both, but to to mirror out of uh, the Rando room. So that's interesting. There's a gold sword. So this could be incredibly close if the big key is in this room. Oh, please be here, please be here, please be here, please be here. Oh my oh. goodness, full right. Oh my gosh. We have oh. a sink. <laughs> These guys are neck and neck. All right, as long as Ben sticks with Christos. Oh my god, that was like perfectly at the same time. <laughs> oh what my goodness. Going? All right, so wait, what chest number are we on? We got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. This is... 13 coming up, I believe. Ben pulling ahead a tiny bit. So unless this is tile room, Ben and Christos are even right now. And it's all down to execution. And Ben does have powder in case that plays a factor, but considering the skill of these players, I don't think it will. Yeah, the skill, the red mail, the amount of hearts. The, the arrow amount of bombs. Cow is a little worrisome, yeah. but not, not too bad. All right, Ruble, what chest is coming up next? I have no clue, but it is the big key. <laughs> oh my gosh. All right, guys, if you check, if you guess 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. 14? I... If you chest big key number 14, you are today's winner. Congratulations to... Finally on! Ah, get him out of here. I call hacks. <laughs> oh my god. Anyway, back to the race. These players are in, like, it comes down to just one bad execution and it's over. Like, if you miss one silver arrow on Landmill, that's it. That's game. That's it. Yeah, and there's also a person or thing called Trolldorm that could hold the keys to this matchup. I'm, I'm just in a forever state of not like this. Like, that emote, that's just me right now. Because I'm, <laughs> I'm not prepared. I'm, I, I'm not mentally prepared. I'm not awake enough yet for this. <laughs> like, yeah, like this, is, guess... this is the kind of stuff you want to see, though, in a Game 3 scenario with, you know, in a tournament setting. You want it to come down to execution because, especially when it's two players that are both like amazing at this video game. It's too bad. Like I don't want to see either of them to go. Like yeah. I wish they were on opposite sides of the bracket. Mm -hmm. Ben getting a little bit quicker. Room. Oh, but the ice slowing him down a little bit. These guys are back to neck and neck. Yeah, Ben is notably switching to Fire Rod here, while Christos had a very, very nice last room in that gauntlet there, so he's yeah, pulled ahead this, a tiny bit. This Stalfos kind of gave him a good pattern. Ooh! Ooh. Here, we, here it is! It's slightly slower Lambo, so Christos takes the lead, just ever so slightly! Yeah, we're like a room difference now. So it's just one missed Wizrobe kill. Um, you know, this bridge coming up where the, the 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 spear guards have a good op, you know, good chance of knocking you off. Um, yep. Anything can happen, and Christo's getting a good pattern there, going straight through. Don't Bang forget Ooh, nice. Agate Two. Agate <laughs> like. Yes, of course. I can never forget. The thing is, like, the bosses all have the same RNG as long as you 
always like get the same pattern. So, um, I th I th I'm assuming these players are going to get the exact same Aga Two like uh, blue balls and all that jazz. So, yeah, Chris had to pick up a full magic decanter there, so Ben got a little bit of time saved on that. Oh, an interesting. Both players having to kill the mini Helmasar to get another key, so. It was weird that Christos skipped a key doing the right side normally. And Ben, like, never actually ended up doing that at all. But they ended up with the same key count in the end. I guess it makes sense now that I think about it. Oh, man. Christos with a slightly getting a really nice Moldorin. I mean, both of them got really nice Moldorins, but Christos especially. Both moving on. They don't need anything else. They have four bottles. They have red mail. They have silvers. They have gold sword. They have half magic. There's literally nothing that they would want to find in that last chest. So, or any of the chests going up the rest of the gauntlet. So, let's see Christos's Aga too. If he's got, he's got the patterns down. Nice double there on Christos' side. Same thing with Ben. Ooh, Ben. Taking a hit. I think that was another double on Ben's side. It might have been, hopefully. And Christos takes Agatou down, and Ben gets a triple, taking her down as well. These players are seconds apart. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Gold Sword. Like, this game is going to be so quick. It's going to come down to, like, who gets a double. Or, you know, a double, maybe a triple with the silvers. Is this, like Two seconds? Three seconds? What is this? Everything is on the line. These players are fighting for their tournament lives. Whoever loses this match is out and will not be... We will not be seeing them again until the spring tournament. Everything matters at this Ganon fight. Chris yeah, with a very slight lead. And again, this is all down to execution. Ganon teleports, they're, it's all seated by the RNG. Like, this entire battle will play out exactly the same for both of these runners. We got Ben using dash strats. Christos just going for the normal hook shot slashes. The thing is, as long as Christos doesn't like miss any, like, oh my gosh, these guys gotta be close though. And a little bit slower on hitting them in that second phase. He was able to get out the circle of uh, fire bats. Oh my gosh, this is awesome. <laughs> These teleports. <laughs> All right, final phase. Chris is getting this the first hit on him. Come on. Oh, Ben might get a double out of this. Almost a triple. Oh my goodness! Oh, ben no kills the big blue pig, and it came down to a double. That's I, I. That's what I was saying. All he had to do, he he stalled lighting the torches so he can get that double in because Christos had to do four singles, and that's it, guys. That's your race. Ben finishes with the time of one thirty six or thirty eight oh six. Christos finishes with the time of one thirty eight oh eight. A two second difference. No. <laughs> <laughs> No way! Wow. That was a good game. I am speechless. Ben is going to be moving on. He will be taking on, I think, ugh, the winner of Keong JSR2. I, I gotta get, my, I gotta catch my breath. <laughs> oh my gosh. Chat. You guys like that? <laughs> it's pretty good, right? Oh, wow. I think so we need more spam. Yeah, we need some more spam. That's basically like that was like a grand finale, like a grand finals, like best of, you know, game three scenario. Like if that had been the end of the tourney, I'd have been satisfied. That was amazing. Christos going into the game fight with a slight lead, but just setting up the double 
using the fire rod, like missing the torch glitch, setting up the double with the fire rod um, was enough, was a big difference maker. I mean, Christos was like maybe, what, three seconds ahead? <laughs> I, yeah. <laughs> that was very interesting. Like, Christos went in with a, a few seconds lead. I mean, honestly, it could have came down to Christos picking up that magic pot or any number of little things. Oh man! I mean, if you can't just look at the, like the very last thing you did, you got to go back and look at the seed as a whole. But yeah, two second difference could have come from anywhere. Anywhere, like that double dip in pot, you know, uh, going to ether tablet by mistake without the book. Um, he did one extra screen transition in Desert Palace instead of getting the boots. Like, as I said at the beginning of the race, every second counts, guys. Especially when you got these top players fighting it, like duking it out. Every second counts. Oh, man. Well, we're going to give these guys a minute to kind of shake it off. Um, see if they want to come in for an interview or not. Uh, they better. I... You just... Whew, can, we, can we get a redo? <laughs> I just want... Can we get a game? Can we just... This one alone is just... We'll have this one be a best of five. How's that? Yeah, I think that's, I think that's, um, like, Dark Magician just sent us a private message saying it. It's a, I'm just kidding. It's not a best of five. Unfortunately. Man. GG's. Uh, chat, I hope you guys, did you guys enjoy that race? I hope you did, because I really enjoyed commentating it. Uh, especially with my, my Ruble. That was a good one. It was. Um... Let's take a look at the bracket. Let's see what we got going on. We still have more races left today. We have Kyong versus JSR2 Gamers. Um, slated to start at 8 p.m. Eastern for the game two. And if Kyong manages to win that race, um, we'll set up a game three, which will be right after that. So we're finishing up top eight tonight. Over on the secondary tournament side, we have our next top four. We're in the top four over there. Zertnol versus Aaron Doby and Dudu Dude, our very own tracker, um, versus Zane, fighting for the grand finals. Um, currently, Zertnol leading the set against Aaron 1 0. That next race is going to be on Sunday. So, and. Uh, as far as I know, we're going to try and get all those races over here on Speed Gaming because, come on, top four, top four, it's got to be on, it's got to be on Speed Gaming. We got to have that. We got to have all y'all watching us over there. So, uh, plenty of randomizer action left, and of course, um, though we don't have races going on, we do have the daily races going on over at Speed Gaming uh, every day at 2 p.m., 8 p.m., and 11 p.m. Eastern. Um, if you want to be a part of those, we are always looking for commentators, trackers, and uh, racers to be featured on the restream. It is four people on the restream, um, so those have been a hoot. But we are going to get Ben in here and Christos in here so that they can duke it out in the interview as well. <laughs> wow, guys. Yeah. Yo. Wow. Hey. Hey. Seems like I'm that gonna... was a pretty good race. <laughs> it was pretty yeah. good. Uh, I'm... Oh, okay. The last shield was at the pedestal. So you were wondering what was. We thought the mirror was going to be there. Yeah, I was thinking the same at some point when I killed Vitreus. I was thinking about maybe after going for pot, getting that last item on, on Elmo, and maybe it was pedestal. But this yeah. was a crazy back and forth. We didn't know who was leading. We didn't know. It really just came down to like Meyer, Green Pendant. Um, I don't actually remember if there was anything left. If Helmasar had anything other than the Green Pendant. Um, uh, yeah, he had something. He did. Okay, and yeah. then Pedestal. Those were the last three options because you guys were both in Ice Palace around the same time. Um, uh, he had a map. Uh, he had something. I think I I counted four items. So I was I was thinking he had something. I opened every chest. Know and still had map missing. Oh, yes. yeah, Ben, you skipped I the first one. chest. The oh. vanilla pinky location, which was a heart piece, so... Oh, my God. So, yeah, Helmosar only had <laughs> green pendant. So, pedestal, okay. green pendant, or pendant mire. And uh, 
Ben skipping out on you skipped on all all the blacksmith stuff if I recall correctly, right? Yeah, I did. What? Okay. For once I do it and you don't do it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and for once I didn't I didn't do escape, of course. And what were there the myths? I've done them so late. Oh yeah, the sewer. Oh, I didn't get them till really late. I did back of escape and front of escape, but not sewer chest for like half hour at least, forty five minutes maybe. <laughs> I went there when I had only pod left or, well, escape. So I was like, hey, it's maybe a bit shorter to go for escape. And I usually don't skip it. So yeah, yeah that's that was a, pretty bad. I've done the same earlier in a race and like the bow was there. It was pretty nice. That sewer chest is always a, a bother, especially yeah. when you get a late lamp. Um, but yeah, you guys were pretty much neck and neck in Meyer. Uh, Christos going for the big chest before going to Vitreus. So taking a slight lead at that point, and then held the lead until phase four of Ganon. <laughs> okay. Well, I think I lost most of that from going right in GT, which had nothing. Well, you, you were still... Ben had a word... Uh, he used the fire rod on Landmola, which allowed you to take that lead back. You guys were actually neck and neck when you found the big key. Um, you guys opened it up at the exact same time, <laughs> pretty much. Yeah, I got two seconds. Wow. <laughs> uh, Christos using silvers on Landmola. He was the first one through that room. And then it, all it came down to was Ben missing the torch glitch intentionally to set up a double on Ganon. Um, yeah. So he got a 1-2-1 one, one, while you got four ones, I believe, Christos. So. Yeah, so I got, the, I got an early slash, which froze mm -hmm. him. Both of um, you guys did, yes. Yeah, I got to say. Oh, okay, so we both got that. <laughs> wow. But then, yeah, I sh I went down to corner with a lamp. I should have yeah. done the better strat of just wait with fire rod. And it happened so fast. But yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. We, we were we were speechless. I thought I was going to win, you know, dude. We, I was like, I was like, I was like oh, I'm we, thought we, were we didn't know who was going to win. That's crazy. <laughs> and like, I didn't have the IRC open when you guys were finishing on screen, so I was like, I didn't even know like the actual time difference because I personally didn't want to be spoiled because it was that Sweet. close. So, that's a nice thing to do, no spoiler. Yeah, that two second difference though, that's... that's... This, 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 I was saying earlier, this could have been the grand finals of the tournament again and I would have been satisfied. <laughs> it's hey. okay, this is best of seven, right? <laughs> <laughs> what? I mean, you're, one, you're an admin, I don't have anything to say. Uh, no, congrats, <laughs> Ben. Dude, I'm GG. glad that, like, all three races have been closed, but this one... Yeah, like those were all crazy, like... The first two, it was like uh, we were attacking him two each time, like when one was finishing, and here we were just in, in front of the other trance at the same time. It's like, I don't You know. had to win, really, so that you kept up the pattern of us alternating wins. <laughs> yeah, one for each. So that's 5 4. Yeah, yeah 5 4 to you now for tournament <laughs> games. <laughs> Until well, next year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Till next one. Grand finals of the spring tournament. Yeah. You can uh, only hope. Sure. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, just GG's to both you guys for putting on quite a show. Thanks. Us over at Speed Gaming, all 2,000 of us watching, commentating, trackers, everyone here, just you guys are amazing. Thank you so much for putting on such an awesome show. And uh, yeah. <laughs> Woo! Yeah, thanks so much for commentaries. I gotta watch that for sure. I mean, I, I've watched all of them anyway, but this one seems even more crazy. So yeah, I'm this was going to watch. I thought the seed was actually pretty horrible, to be honest. It was. It was. It yeah. Was, so I'm glad was, that it was as horrible for you as it was for me. <laughs> it was awful, <laughs> pretty much. And the thing is, like from both of you guys, there wasn't really any big, like mistakes, um, that cost you time. The only minor ones really was uh, the fire rod at. Old man, Christos skipping that initially, having to go back down there and oh, then going up to Tower of Hera. So that cost a little bit of time. Um, then you checking Ether without the book. Yeah. That was a little bit more, a couple more seconds. Yeah, that was just then... a complete brain. <laughs> I don't know yeah. no, it what I was doing. And I was then... trying to make my second trip up to Hera more worthwhile. So I was like, okay, let's get the last item in Hera and see what's on ether tablet mm -hmm. walk to ether tablet and i didn't have the book and i was like oh. and then of course the book was in spiral yes. and you're like come on man yeah, that, <laughs> yeah. I did, then i did spiral right after got the book and was like no way dude. yeah that's yeah. why at some point i kind of checked that ether even if it was a super long trip i was really hoping for something good there but it was it was a net tweet oh nice <laughs> yeah it's pretty nice um and then i guess just the double dip pod was a little costly but at that point it didn't matter you were in the lead so 
but that's just one of those one of those things. We were I was personally because I'm evil. I was kind of hoping that green pendant was going to be the answer because I wanted to see a Christmas Owen triple dip pod pendant pod. Oh, thanks, buddy. No problem. Love you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fortunately, that Meyer play ended up being it. So, but yeah, overall, you guys definitely gotta gotta go back and check this one out. It was a doozy. So. Yeah, GG's to both you guys, and uh, look forward to seeing more from both of you. Um, guys, chat, what are you doing? Go follow these guys. They're amazing streamers. They're amazing runners, obviously. Um, they put on quite a show. They deserve all the support in the world, so GG's to the both of you. Yeah, GG's, Ben, and good luck for the <laughs> semis and finals. You better win. Thank you. <laughs> wow. <laughs> more no pressure. pressure. No pressure. I, I don't need any more pressure. I have so much already. Dude, that's insane. Back to back champion. It's not the same mode. <laughs> yeah, true. But yeah, thanks everybody. And yeah, until next time. Until next time. Cheers. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it on here for Randomizer on the Speed Gaming channel. Uh, coming up next, we do have. I believe, let me refresh just in case the schedule has changed at all. But as far as I know, we do have a Super Mario Odyssey race coming up next. Um, and uh, we'll be back with more tournament action tonight at 8 p.m. with Kyong versus JSR2 Gamers. Um, shout outs to, of course, Ruble, my co-commentator. Thank you so much, my friend. This was a treat. Yep, thank you as well. Um, and of course, to Doo -Doo Dude, our tracker and uh, Everyone here at Speed Gaming, Rubel, I will give you the honor of the last words for this stream. Um, okay, let's uh, see you next mission. <laughs> there you go. He said the thing. All right, guys. Wait. Sorry. Now, 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 actually, now say your last word. Um, see you on next hello. mission. <laughs> All right, bye. <laughs> see you guys. <laughs>